to the standoff between the U.S. and Iran. The Pentagon now considering a request to send an additional 5,000 troops to the Middle East. And separately, the Associated Press reporting for the very first time, Iran's hardline supreme leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, publicly lectured President Hussein Rouhani, the country's moderate president, and also the foreign minister, who's also moderate. The hardliner Ayatollah disagreeing with the 2015 nuclear deal struck under President Obama and blaming them for the deal's unraveling. Joining me now is retired Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin. Good to see you, General. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, you know, on the deployment of the forces, I just saw that before I came on, and I would say that uh, another 5,000 troops could be at the request of the Central Command, or it could be. It could emanate from the embassy, for that matter, and I don't know if it's to shore up the U.S. interest over in Iraq and Syria, because there are Americans in both places, or whether there's some other purpose, but I, I would think it's a security issue. Uh, with regards to the squabble between Rouhani and the Supreme Council and, and the Ayatollah uh, Khamenei, uh, that is not something new. That is uh, That has been an ongoing problem for them, and it, the same thing with uh, Ahmadinejad when he was president. The presidents rarely agree with the Supreme Council, so I don't see this as much of a, a, a change. I hear what you're saying, General. The Associated Press and others reporting that it's for the first time it broke out into the open. He publicly named them. So the splits and divisions, you're, you're right, General, they are there. Um, I like your take on this, General, that how yesterday Senate members met with Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo about the next steps with Iran. Uh, Senator Lindsey Graham tweeted out this, quote, the threat streams from Iran against American interests are real and severe. Senator Graham went on to say the Trump administration has shown amazing restraint in the face of escalating aggressions from Iran. General, there's all this de the debate going on about whether or not the, the Americans here are overreaching. I mean, are Iranian directed attacks on four ships, sabotaging other nations' pipelines, firing on rockets. What, where do you come down on this? Yeah, look, the, the intel is real. I agree with Senator Graham. I was over there uh, about 10 days ago in Iraq, and I can tell you, uh, it was everything was unfolding while I was there, and uh, they were taking this very, very seriously. The intel is, is absolutely what the administration is saying it is. Now, I do not think that either Donald Trump or the Iranians want to go to war. Look, the Iranians have uh, everything to lose by going to war with the United States. Keep in mind that the people in Iran do not support their government. I talked to a guy while I was over there that lives in Tehran. He's been there for over a dozen years, and uh, he made it very clear. The people there do not support the government. Sixty percent of them are under 30 years old. They don't support the government. So the government has everything to lose by getting into a war that they can't win with the United States. Now, that's not to say that it wouldn't be a problem for the U.S. as well. But I don't think the Iranians want, uh, want war, and I can tell you that Donald Trump does not want war. But what he is not going to do is stand by and let them threaten us and conduct standoff attacks against American personnel and interest in the Middle East. Senator John Kennedy called Iran a cancer. Watch. My personal feeling is that Iran is a cancer. It's a cancer on the Middle East and it's a cancer on the world. Not the Iranian people, but the Iranian leadership. You know, Iran was behind the Cobra bombings, the, uh, the bombings of Marines and, uh, you know, under Reagan. If there was a more forceful response to Iran, given their past uh, problems with Iran, would Iran have backed off? It looks like they're backing off pretty quickly here. There's a lot of heated rhetoric, but to your point, General, it seems like what the president is doing is working. He's ratcheting up the pressure on them. The sanctions are working. The sanctions have forced them into a real economic problem. Uh, they've already cut their funding to Hezbollah by half. They've stopped supporting some of the militias and, and uh, the Shia militias in Syria. And uh, they are in, they're having some very serious economic problems. And that alone, if you, if you keep the pressure on them, that alone is going to make a huge difference in what they're going to be able to do next.